welcome to my channel. A little over a month ago, I installed Barina Plant Grow Light for one of my African Violet plant stands. And today will be a quick update video as to how my African Violets are doing under the new light. The African Violet hybrids that have variegated leaves seem to be doing rather well. Here we have Rob's Slap Happy by Ralph Robinson. And in addition to having very beautiful pink variegation in the leaves, it has been blooming very nicely. This is the first blooming cycle. So it seems to be very happy with the new setup. Here we have Rob's Chili Willy starting to have flower buds, also looking very, very good. Uh, this is Dean's Faded Rose, good variegation on leaves. Mekinda Girl that very often doesn't have variegation in the center, here has developed very nice crown variegation and also started to bloom recently. Going to the bottom shelf, we see Kay's Fiesta Lady, first blooming cycle, also very nice variegation on leaves and blooming very nicely for the first blooming cycle, has very pretty fantasy in the blooms. And another blooming variegated variety, this one is a mini Snuggles Little Girl, also the first blooming cycle here. And here in the corner, not yet blooming, but I wanted to show you the gorgeous variegation on leaves. And it has the flower buds too. This is Glitter Fountain. It's a standard trailer by Irene Fredette. Gorgeous, gorgeous variegation on leaves. In the baby tray here, we have Scales by Yelena Libetska developing very nice platinum pink variegation with much more pink than usual. Usually it's more platinum under regular LED lights. Next to it is painted silk. This one is like McKinder Girl. Sometimes it has no variegation under regular lights uh, whatsoever, but here under the plant grow light, it has developed gorgeous, very beautiful, very distinct variegation in the crown. And here we have an Nitiri, and this variety also seems to be developing very nice and distinct variegation in the center. It's very light golden color, very beautiful. However, here we have another Rob's Slap Happy that looks a little bit as if it's having too much light because as we can see, the leaves in the second or third row from the center, they are standing up as if they're trying to protect the center of the crown from the light that is too intense. Another variegated variety here is, uh, it's a baby of Cabbage Patch. It's a variegated standard. It has developed very beautiful variegation, but the center looks a little bit crowded. Um, so I'm thinking maybe that is also a sign of too much light. Here we have also a few variegated varieties that display the signs of too much light exposure or too intense light. This is Pink Sensation. And even though it does show very nice variegation, but the leaves are very stiff and they're kind of bunching up together in the center trying to protect the tender uh, leaves in the center. And here we have watermelon snow displaying also the same symptoms because the central leaves are very tight. And this one is, I think, having the most severe case of too much light exposure. This is Funambule, it's a variegated standard and it seems to be struggling under the very bright Barina Grow Light. So I will be repotting it and taking it away under the natural light as soon as possible. The non-variegated varieties also seem to be adapting differently to the very bright Barina Grow Light. 
this is Jolly Sun Chaser. It has been doing rather well. It even started blooming. So this variety seems to be doing okay with Barina Light. And here we have on the bottom shelf another couple of varieties that are blooming. This is Max Wudu Yudu. Very nice, bright, intense uh, dark red blooms. And Blue Dragon having its first bloom. And here we have Zolushkin Son, Cinderella's Dream, also having the first blooming cycle. Other non-variegated varieties do show some of the too much light symptoms. This is Reflections of Spring. It's a young plant and it seems to be having the leaves up as if trying to protect the center. And here we have a vintage Fisher's Leona. She's having a very crowded center that I've never seen with this variety before. So it definitely is receiving too much light. And here in the baby tray that is the closest to the lights, only 10 inches away, we also have some non-variegated varieties that have some light possible light damage, like here, Vallarta Campanas Moradas has some discoloration on leaves. And here we have Perky having brown spots, which look like sunburn on leaves. The distance between the top of the crowns and the lights here in the baby tray is about 10 inches. And the distance between the plants that are growing in the individual containers and the top of the light is about 12 inches. So how much light is too much light for African violets? Usually the light intensity or the light brightness is measured in lumen or lux. And usually the lux parameter or the lumen parameter is supplied by the manufacturer here on the regular LED light fixture. It's a shop light. We have 4100 lumen indicated on the label, whereas Barina plant grow light didn't come with the light intensity parameter. So what I did, I measured the lux output um, or the light intensity by the Barina Grow Light using a free light meter app. And it came in the range of about 5,000 to 7,000 lux. So what is the best lux parameter to grow African violets? Optimara website recommends the lux light levels at 10,000 to 12,000 lux and other sources mention all the way up to 16,000 lux. Based on my personal observation, I can see that not all violets are created equal as far as their light intensity requirements. Uh, my plants here, some of them, as I mentioned, some of the variegated varieties look great. I like this Chili Willy, Rob's Chili Willy and Dean's Faded Rose, and some of them do develop the tight crown centers under the very bright Barina Grow Light. So what I will try to do next is try and increase the distance between the lights and the top of the plants. Right now, as I mentioned, these individually potted plants are 12 inches away from the light. So I have here extra few inches, two or three inches space due to these hooks. So I will remove the hooks and just zip them all the way to the shelf using the zip ties. And then I will keep observing them. And then I will also 
try and maybe have instead of two lights using only one fixture per shelf on some of the shelves for the plants that have the tight crown symptoms. Right now, the lights are on for 10 hours a day. So I might also try and decrease the number of hours when the lights are on down to eight hours. And I will keep you guys posted